welcome back to another episode of The Lost and Forgotten here at News First. We are in discussion with uh, Dr. Zamir Karim, a historian attached to the University of Colombo, uh, where we are discussing about uh, the Afghan settlements uh, here in Sri Lanka. A very good day to you, Dr. Karim, and uh, welcome to the show. Very good day and thank you so much for having me on your show. Dr. Karim, I'm sure that this episode would also be interesting as much as our previous one. Uh, to start off, uh, let us talk about uh, the Afghan settlements uh, in the pre-colonial times uh, here in Sri Lanka. Uh, how were the settlements like where before Sri Lanka was invaded by foreign forces? Okay, so the history of Afghans in Sri Lanka can be traced back to remote antiquity. In fact, you can trace it back to the first century BC. Because Afghanistan is a historic nation. It's a nation steeped in history and heritage. So Afghanistan was known by numerous names in the past. And there were people from Afghanistan who settled in Sri Lanka as early as the first century BC. They were, they were mainly traders. Just like how they came during the British colonial period, the Afghans who settled in the first century BC were also horse so traders. So they were basically confined to trading and uh, horse trading or were there any other? They were involved in various other, right. uh, this, like there were pilgrims, there were monks who came to the country and I'll be talking about it. But Sri Lanka, or Sil uh, Silon or Lanka as it was known, was part of the Kamboj Dwaraka route. So Kamboj, for example, places like Kamboj, Gandhar, Taxila, Peshawar and numerous other places like you know, Hastinagar and all those ancient cities which you find in the Pashtunistan region. So that is basically a shipping uh, trade route. Trade. Uh, the trade, the, the Dwaraka Kamboja route is a trade route, and Kamboja and Gandhar and all those areas you find in present day Afghanistan and Pakistan. So, because of the fact that all these places that I mentioned were centers of Buddhist learning, teaching, innovation, pilgrimage, and because of these reasons, there were Afghans who came to Ceylon as monks and traders, and there were monks, pilgrims, and traders from Ceylon who went and settled in Afghanistan. So, Ceylon was part of this Kamboja Dwaraka route. So, there were horse keepers who came from these regions and settled in Ceylon during the prehistoric times. And even the legendary king of Sri Lanka, Ravan, is said to have owned horses who which he imported from the northern Indus Valley from Kamboj and Arita and various other places. And there were also Buddhist monks who came to the country. From Afghanistan. From Afghanistan. Because well, why, Afghanistan why did they come a, here all the way? Because uh, in the second century BC, for example, there was this very large temple that was built and it was called Ruan Veli Dagaba. It was called Mahastupa back then. So upon the completion of this temple, which at the time of completion was one of the tallest structures in the world. So for the initiation ceremony of the Ruan Veli Dagaba, there were monks who came from different parts of the world. Right? So there was a monk named Yona Mahadamma Rakita, as mentioned in the chronicle Mahavamsa. He was from Alexandria in the Caucasus, which is present day Afghanistan. So Yona Mahadamma Rakita came with an entourage of 30,000 Buddhist monks and novices for the initiation ceremony which was performed in Sri Lanka. And for the same ceremony, there were monks like Atina the Elder who came from Kashmir. There was another monk named Mittina who came from other parts of India. And there was another monk named Mahadeva who came with a much larger entourage of 460,000 Buddhist monks and novices for this initiation ceremony. And according to William Geiger, the man who translated the chronicle Mahavamsa, he came from a place known as Pallava Boga. Now Pallava Boga, according to him, is part of present-day Iran, which was formerly called Persia. So Persian empires, Afghanistan was part of several Persian empires. Okay, it was a satrapy of various Persian empires. So there were many monks who came during that period. In fact, even the first two lay disciples of Lord Buddha, Tapasu and Balika, came from Bahika, which is in Bactria in Afghanistan. Afghanistan was formerly known by different names like Bactria, Bagram, Aryana, Grandiana, Magiana, Kalkosia, Arakosia. So many terms were used to identify the country. So they came and settled during those periods. So speaking about the monks who came uh, with their followers uh, uh, right here to Sri Lanka, did these monks settle in Sri Lanka or was it for that uh, one particular occasion? I believe that they came only for the initiation ceremony. Some of them may have settled here in Sri Lanka because the monasteries of our country were very popular. Now, when we talk about the traders who came from Afghanistan, they settled in Sri Lanka as evinced by the archaeological findings, the numismatic evidences, the literary sources confirm the settlement of people from Kamboj, Gandhara and various other places I mentioned in cities like Anuradhapura, Polonnaruwa, Mantai, Mantota and various other entrepôts of our island. I think that brings us to our next point which uh, we should be raising in this discussion. Uh, where exactly were the Afghan settlements uh, in the country in the pre-colonial times? Were they confined to a particular region in the country or were they just scattered around based on their needs? 
Okay, so during the time of the Rajarata civilization, when the Afghans came to our country, so they settled in the areas of Rajarata, like Anuradhapura, Polonnaru, and those areas. And we have evidences to prove inscriptions and archaeological findings. And then during the Portuguese period came the next set of Afghans, who, who were also traders. So it is mentioned that Afghans were involved in the trade of Indian madder, chai as it was called. And they had settlements along the eastern coast of our country mainly in the Baticolo region. So during the Dutch colonial period, again, there were Afghans who came to our country. So according to this Tamil narrative, Mattakalapuman Miam, which means glory of Baticolo, there were Afghans who settled in Baticolo, Eravur, Akare Patri, those areas. This was way before, way before the Prior Portuguese. Prior to the advent of the British. This was during the Portuguese colonial period. So according to the Tamil narrative, Mattakalapuman Miam, there was a schooner carrying Afghan merchants that was washed ashore by a storm and they sought refuge in Batiklo. And there was a tribe known as the Mukwar tribe. You still find the Mukwars living in Batiklo region. Even as we speak right now. Yes. yes. So the Mukwars, you find them in India, in South India, as well as in Sri Lanka. So the Mukwars provided refuge to the Afghans who came and settled because their ship was damaged. So they sought refuge and they were provided refuge by the Mukwars. So when the Afghans came in return to the favor which was offered to them by the Mukwars, the Mukwars requested the Afghans to help them redeem their villages from the clutches of the Timilers. Now, Timilers is another Timilers? tribe, another caste, a Tamil caste. So, all these Tamil castes that lived along the eastern coast were involved in fishing, conch shell, uh, pearl fishery, and agriculture. So, that there was this ancient feud between the Timilers and the Mukwars, and the Timilers had incessantly raided, pillaged, ransacked the villages of the Mukwars. The temples were looted, plundered, the settlers were killed. So, and some of the villages that were previously occupied by the Mukwars, the Mukwar hamlet were forcefully occupied by the Timilers. So what did the Afghans do? They helped the Mukwars redeem these villages from the clutches of the Timilers. Okay, so there were many battles that were fought and the Afghans were requested by the Mukwars to settle in villages like Eravur. So Era did we have Afghan troops actually fighting wars? Yeah, yeah we Sudan? had those Afghan merchants who came because Afghans were warriors. They're known for their bravery and valor and courage. So those who settled in our country fought against the Timilers and Eravur was an uninhabited place. That is what it means. Eravur means uninhabited place. So the Afghans were asked by the Mukwars to settle permanently on the island so that they can prevent the future incursions from the north and from various other parts of the island so that they provide protection to the Mukwars. Yeah. Since speaking about uh, the settlement of Afghans uh, during the period of the Portuguese, uh, uh, during our previous episode we spoke about how the British had uh, got down uh, people from Afghanistan for certain uh, trades. Uh, was that the same situation in terms of the Portuguese as well? Did the Portuguese bring down these Afghans for a particular purpose? No, the Portuguese uh, and the Dutch were not involved in bringing down right. laborers and horse keepers. The Afghans came on their own, they were involved in trade purposes. That's how they settled in our country. In fact, there are place names in Batiklo that appertain to the battles that were fought between the Timilers and the Mukwars. For example, there is a place called Sandiveli. Sandiveli means the field where the Afghans met the Mukwars. Okay, likewise, there is a place called Wahe Tukia Pele. Wahe Tukia Pele means the Timilar chiefess. Wahe was hanged in this place. Okay, and then there is another place called Sattaragonda, meaning the chieftain of the Timilar clan was killed there. And then there, is, there are many places in particular region which appertain to the battles which the Timilars fought with the Afghans. And the Afghans eventually settled, they married Mukwar women and they settled permanently on the island. But the only issue is that because the Mukwars and the Timilars and all those tribes that live along the eastern coast follow something known as the Kudi system which is the matrilineal, matriclan, matrilineality. So automatically, the children born to the Afghan fathers and Mukwar or Timilar mothers became part of the Mukwar community or the Timilar community. So eventually, the Afghan community went extinct, despite the fact that they settled in our country. Likewise, there is evidence to prove that there were Afghan physicians who came to Ceylon. Right. Were they brought down to the country or did they arrive at their own will? No, what they was were brought to the, the country. That is because Parakranabahu, the king of Kote, was suffering from an incurable malady. So he couldn't find, the physicians of our country couldn't treat his condition. So he sent a letter to the Sultan of Delhi and the Delhi Sultan sent two of his Hakims, meaning practitioners of Yunani medicine, the Greco-Arabic medicine. So two Afghan Hakims 
came to Ceylon, this was during the time of Parakarnabahu, and they settled permanently and their descendants are known as the Gopala Moors. It's a community, you'll find the Gopala Moors. Do we have Moors. descendants of this yes, particular community Gopala as we Moors. speak yes, right we now? Do. We do have Gopala Moors in Kurunagala, in Kegol and all those places. They were not only the physicians to the kings, but they were also military chieftains. So from the time of Parakarnabahu II up until the reign of Sri Vikramaraja Singha, these Gopala Moors, or they also referred to as the Beit Nilames, because they were in charge of the Department of the Medicine. So, so basically, would it be uh, fair enough to say that uh, there were two Afghans who were involved in curing Sri Lanka's uh, yeah, one set of Afghans who resolved the age-old feud between various communities on the eastern on coast. the eastern coast, and then there came the Hakims who kind of managed to cure this malady under which uh, King Parakarabahu laboured, and then there were also Afghans who were brought to this country during the time of King Rajasinghe. So when Rajasinghe was the king of Ceylon, he wanted to get rid of the Dutch. Right, so because he wanted to get, he was he had grown tired of the Dutch. He wanted to get rid of them once and for all. So he sought the assistance of the British. So what did Raja Singha do? Is he sent his Muslim chieftain Makandar Mudaliar, also referred to as Udur Mulebbe, to go meet the Nawab of Arcot or Karnatik, that is in South India. Okay, so he sent this Muslim envoy from Ceylon. King Raja Singha sent him to meet the Nawab of Arcot because he was an ally to the British. So this man went and met the Nawab of Arcot, but the Nawab of Arcot was suspicious. Why has the King of Ceylon sent a Muslim envoy? Why hasn't he sent a high-ranking official? Why a minor official has been sent? So he was suspicious whether or not the King of Kandy required the help of the British. So he sent two Patan envoys, meaning Afghans. So those Afghan emissaries came to Ceylon, they were received by the King of Kandy and they realized that yes, King Raja Singh this was is, a genuine in need, request. is in genuine need of the help of the British to usurp the Dutch and they returned to Madras and they informed the Nawab of Akot and he informed the, uh, the governor of Madras. Okay, so George Piggott was kept informed and he sent an English emissary named John Pybus and John Pybus came again with two Patans and a contingent of soldiers, came to Ceylon and they were received by the King of Kandy and they lived in Kandy for 40 days. So were the, were the soldiers uh, consisting of Afghans or were yeah, they the, the British? soldiers were sent by the Nawab of Arcot. So they were not English soldiers. They could have been Indian sepoy soldiers. A few of them may have were been Were the Afghans Pashans. involved in that? The Afghans were the two envoys, the, the two chief envoys, diplomats right. who were brought to the country. So they lived in Ceylon for 40, uh, for 40 days. And uh, in Ramol Adhikar's Balawa in Nagaha Vidya, but they didn't make any clear decision whether or not the British would help. So what they told us, yes, we'll go back to India and convey the message to the British government. But there were no concrete agreements made. And it was later proven that the British were not keen on helping uh, King Rajasinghe and his efforts went futile. But the trade links between Arcot and Ceylon continued despite the whole you know, disagreement between the British and the uh, King of Ceylon. So the trade links continued up until the British period. Thank you very much Dr. Karim for appearing on the second episode of The Lost and Forgotten. Uh, it was indeed fascinating to talk about uh, the contributions uh, rendered by the Afghans who settled here in Sri Lanka. On our third episode of The Lost and Forgotten, we would be discussing about uh, several cultures uh, surrounding the Afghans uh, here in Sri Lanka as well as their current situation. Where are the Afghans right now. That will be coming up your way on the third episode of The Lost and Forgotten. Until then, have yourselves a great day ahead. Take care and God, God bless. bless.